Game in McEnany along with Brown's long stick midfielder Larkin Kemp. And, uh, you know, Larkin, you watched the Final Four on TV. What was it like to go out there and practice and experience this here at Lincoln Financial Field? Yeah, you know, it's an incre incredibly special moment. You know, it's a huge honor, obviously, to be here. But, uh, you know, we're trying to shrink it down and, and remember that the lines don't change. We still have a game to play. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's a thrill of a lifetime. It's an incredible experience. It's been a ton of fun so far, and we're you know really excited to play a really good team. All right, take us take us into your role at Brown. When they went through sort of the system change and said, all right, we're going to pick up the pace and run, 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 what did that mean to you? You know, it meant a ton. You know, it, it allowed me to use my legs, use my hands, and, uh, you know, Coach puts a lot of trust in us, not just me, but, you know, Alec and Jake and the whole rope unit. And, uh, you know, for us, it's just all about getting the ball on the deck, getting it up and out, and getting to the attack. You know, our attack's really special, obviously, Dylan and the guys. So, you know, People, you know, really focus on the goals and the assists, but in reality, I'm just trying to get the hockey assist. All right, take us into your world, though. When you're on a guy, right. midfielder, he takes a shot, and you know Jack's going to make that save. When are you breaking out? You know, the second I see anybody even, you know, get hands on, maybe the ball's going to hit the deck or someone even winding up for a shot, even if it's going to be a general drill pump fake, I'm, you know, I'm breaking out. I'm an acting as a wide receiver. Coach allows us to kind of play five-man matchups on the back end, and I'm going out over the top. And Jack's one of the best outlet passers, you know, in my opinion, in the history of the sport. He's unbelievable in that role, so it's been great for us. All right, you mentioned Dylan. Uh, certainly Coach uh, Tiffany has said it's doubtful. I uh, wasn't able to practice today. This will be the second game. But sort of how do you guys make sure that that doesn't take the wind out of your sails, whether he can go or not? Yeah, I mean, you can't replace him. But at the same time, you know, we really believe in our system. And we believe, you know, Bailey Taylor or whoever's going to be back there will be ready to go. Um, at the same time, seeing the work he's putting in off the field to try and you know get ready to hypothetically be able to go or not go, it means a lot to us. He's a motivational leader, whether he knows it or not. And uh, you know, I think we're going to be ready. It's hard not to on this stage, and we're going to give it our all. And I think it'll be a hectic game. All right, Larkin and Kemp, really appreciate it. Yeah. for Brown. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, guys. Eamon McEnany back here at the link with Maryland junior attackman Matt Rambo. And Matt, I know this is nothing new for you. You played two games here last year in the Final Four, but look around as a Philly native. What kind of emotions, what kind of adrenaline do you feel coming on this field just for practice? Um, you know, it's awesome to be back here at you know, Philly, my hometown. Um, you know, it's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like home again because we were here last year, so a lot of us feel like we've been here. Um, you know, so we're not as, I don't know if it's the right way to play, we're not like as uh, nervous, I would say, about it. So, uh, you know, it's a business trip here. It's just like any other stadium. We played in great stadiums before, Maryland Stadium, Ohio State. So it's awesome to be in a great another stadium, but, you know, we just got to take a game out of time. You mentioned business trip, and it seems this team has been all business all year long. How did that foundation Get, get laid with this group here in this year, 2016? Right. Um, you know, we have goals every year. One of the goals was with the Big Ten Championship, and we, we did that. Um, you know, every team's goal is to win a national championship, but you can't jump ahead. you got to take one game at a time. Um, you know, every win's an important win, so we're just trying to, you know, look at one game at a time and think that's the most important game and on our schedule is the next game. So our most important game is Brown. Now, a lot of people like to point to the change from Colin Heacock going from midi to attack to making your offense more dynamic. Obviously, that meant he yeah. became a wingman for you. How did that change things and turn the offense around or get the offense going? Yeah, I mean, he's a hard, you know, righty, lefty, you know, dodger to cover. Um, he's one of my best friends at Maryland, probably my best friend at Maryland. So, you know, having a guy with so much chemistry back there with me, it's, you know, it's awesome. I mean, years in the past, last year, and freshman year he came behind and uh, you know inverted a lot so you know just having him back there just you know I think he gives defense a little bit more trouble you know he's such a powerful force and uh, strong fast so it's just awesome having great chemistry with that person. All right last question and the most important question a lot of lacrosse fans watching this getting ready to come down to Philadelphia for the whole weekend they got one cheesesteak place to go to where should they uh, go? Steve, Steve's Prince of Steaks is the best cheesesteak spot I believe um, my family, my buddies all think so too, so, you know, go to Steve's. All right, you better get there quickly because the secret's not out anymore. The secret is out. All right, Matt all right, Rambo, thank thanks a lot for the time. Good gotcha. luck this weekend. Eamon McEnany back here at the link, joined now by Loyola defenseman David Manning. And David, you get to the Final Four, you don't care who you're going to play. You could play Tim Buck, U University, but here you are, a Chapel Hill native, and you're lining up against the Tar Heels. What's this week been like hearing from friends in the neighborhood and you know all those people you grew up with back in North Carolina? Well, a lot of people are saying, um, I'm always Tar Heel, I'll root for you, but you know, we're rooting for Tar Heels too. <laughs> then the family's like, this is the first time we're ever going to root against UNC. 
So it's a little mix between both, but it's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, what's this like? What's the difference now? You were part of that 2012 run. What's the difference now coming back as an established veteran for the Greyhounds? I think just having that knowledge and experience from you know being led by those leaders, that senior class, and trying to help out with the freshmen. I know it's, it's a long season. It's been four months straight, so you know, tell them it's worth it. You know, a lot of kids get burned out around this time, and you know, the team that is having best practices and they're not, you know, they're peaking at the right time and not going down. Um, they're going to be the most successful team. Now, Coach Toomey told us during the week that he felt that the foundation for this team was built off of the disappointment last year and how you handled it in the offseason right away. As a senior leader, what was the key to bouncing back and setting the foundation for this year's team? I think just being hungry, um, especially after having a disappointing season, um, not being able to play, really, it hurt. Just looking around the sidelines, not being helpless. Um, but we put in a lot of work in the summer and the fall. I mean, some rigorous workouts, and we all just came together as a team. And, you know, we set our goal, major league championship. Now, America, the lacrosse world, found out about Pat Spencer pretty late. They're still finding out about him. When did you realize going up against him in practice that this kid was something special? First day. You know, you got this uh, top 10 recruit coming in, like the senior defenseman, oh, I'm going to take him. You know, humble him a little bit. He humbled me. I mean, he put me on skates the first day, and that's when we all knew, like, this kid's a real deal. So from that point on, we knew he was going to be something special. David Manning, Loyola senior defenseman. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy it. Damon McEnany down at the link, joined now by North Carolina goalie Brian Balkum. And uh, Brian, let's uh, put this in perspective. You guys have had a week after the Notre Dame game, but just take us back to that weekend and what it meant for everyone involved in this program, and of course, Coach Bresci, to have that game in that city. Yeah, it's obviously a very emotional uh, game for us. Everybody knows about the monkey on our back, not being in championship weekend in 23 years. Um, but I thought there's no better place to go play that game then back at Columbus where, you know, so much happened with the Bresci family. Coach Bresci started his head coaching career there. Um, obviously everything with Michael. So we knew that going into the game. And uh, really what we did as a team was just focus on playing it as any other game throughout the year. Um, obviously Patrick Kelly before the game spoke about how we should, you know, play the game for Coach Bresci. And I think everyone knew that going in and, you know, playing with that passion, playing with that energy really helped us a lot to you know, be able to get that win over Notre Dame. Now, Coach Bresci has said this, a lot of the reporters have said that, that this is a team playing with house money, that after all the pressure on previous teams to get back to championship weekend, this team was kind of under the radar. Now that you're here and you have a chance, two more games to play for the national championship, how would you describe the pressure? I mean, obviously there's pressure just because championship weekend likes camera action, but the way we got to look at it is just, it's two more lacrosse games. It's the same game that guys have been playing since second grade, sixth grade, whatever it was. Same exact game. There's just a little bit more people in the stands, and it feels a little bit nicer. But, I mean, other than that, you just got to go out there, stick to what you know, stick to your fundamentals, and just get it done. Nicer than Fetzer Field. Come on, that place is palatial. I'm just kidding, <laughs> Tar Heel fans. Having fun with you. All right, let's talk about you personally. You were sick in the first Notre Dame game back on April 23rd. You rallied and made some clutch saves in the fourth quarter. Since then, your season's been different. The percentage, save percentage numbers are moving up. What's been the difference to you personally the last couple of games, the last couple of weeks? For me, it's just been going back to the fundamentals, um, just trying to be as consistent as possible in practice and taking every practice as serious as I can. Um, kind of the thing that we have with Coach Holman, our goalie coach, is it's not practice, it's a game. Every time that you go out there, you got to play it as if it's a game. And, you know, I've really taken on that mentality, so the other goalies, and that's really helped us to all push each other. And, you know, obviously the product on the field has increased. And I also give a lot of that credit to the preparation that Coach Vice has put in with the defense and just the shots that our defense has you know, been given up lately, it's given me a good chance to save the ball. You've made two huge saves, I think, in the NCAA tournament. 7-7, seven, seven, Marquette's rolling. They have a chance in transition off the faceoff. You make a big save there. Tar Heels go down and score to completely change that game. I know last week was one-sided, but a play that gets often overlooked, I think, was your stop on Perkovic early, right off the faceoff in the third. That game could have gone a different way if you don't stop that shot. Now let's turn the page to Loyola. How do you describe the challenge of Pat Spencer and company? I mean, Pat Spence is a great player. I've been watching him all year. Uh, he likes to turn the corner pretty quick, so I'm just going to have to be ready the entire game. Um, I mean, as long as our defense does their job and keeps them outside, I, I really feel confident. And the way I always look at it is we've always got to make the saves that he's supposed to and steal one or two. So if I can do that, I, I know that we're going to be in pretty good shape going forward. All right, Brian, thanks for the time. Thanks, Brian Volk Volcom, North Carolina goalie. They take on Loyola at noon Saturday on ESPN2.